Welcome to chapter three, where we start the exciting stuff, since it focuses on chemical reactions. In this lesson, we will learn how to write a general chemical equation, which represents chemical reactions. Your goal is to be able to write a balanced chemical equation from a description of a reaction. The naming rules from last chapter will be important here, since we need to turn a compound's name into its formula. A chemical equation is how chemists represent a reaction. Each chemical equation can be read like a sentence with reactants on the left going to products on the right. This chemical equation reads, two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen react to produce two molecules of water. All equations must follow conservation of mass, meaning they have the same number of each atom on the left and on the right. Anytime you write a chemical equation, it has to be balanced. We love to take points off for unbalanced equations. On this slide, I'll show you two ways to write an incorrect equation given the prompt hydrogen and oxygen react to form water. You might think, oh, that's easy. Hydrogen is H, oxygen is O, water is H2O. Well, unfortunately, you've forgotten about the mighty Brinkelhoff. Hydrogen and oxygen exist as diatomic molecules. Let's try this again. Hydrogen, H2, and oxygen, O2, react to form water. This looks better until we add up the number of oxygen and hydrogen atoms on each side. And, uh-oh, we have two oxygen atoms on the left side, but only one oxygen atom on the right. We have just broken the law of conservation of mass. Let's try one final time. Hydrogen and oxygen react to produce water. In order to balance an equation, we add stoichiometric coefficients. These numbers tell us that multiple molecules of this substance are needed in the balanced reaction. Since I'm missing an oxygen from the right side of the equation, I will put a two in front of H2O. Now we have the right number of oxygens on both sides, but the number of hydrogen atoms is off. To fix that, I'll add a two in front of the hydrogen on the left side. Now the hydrogens and oxygens are balanced. Time for a practice problem. Follow along as I write a balanced equation from the following description. Dinitrogen pentoxide decomposes into nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. First, we need to translate the names into formulas. Dinitrogen pentoxide is N2O5, nitrogen dioxide is NO2, and oxygen is a diatomic molecule O2. Once we've done that, we'll count up the elements on each side and start adding coefficients until it's balanced. Since we have two ends on the left and only one on the right, I'll put a two in front of nitrogen dioxide. This gives us the right number of nitrogen atoms, but the number of oxygens is still incorrect. However, I feel kind of stuck. The left side has five atoms of oxygen, but on the right side, we can only add oxygen in increments of two. Sometimes when you feel stuck like this, it's best to just try doubling the largest compound, in this case, dinitrogen pentoxide. Now we have four atoms of nitrogen on the left, but only two on the right. I'll increase the coefficient on NO2 from two to four. And with that, the equation is balanced. They are the same number of each atom on the left and right side. Good job. As we continue to explore the world through chemistry, we will see that many elements will only react in a specific state of matter. So chemists usually include the state of matter when writing a reaction. You should become a pro at including states of matter in your written equations, such as for this reaction, mag magnesium metal and oxygen gas react to form magnesium oxide salt. All right, time for a practice problem. Pause the video and write a chemical equation for this reaction, including states of matter.
Okay, time for the solution. First, we need to translate these names into formulas. Carbon tetrahydride or methane is CH4. Oxygen is O2. Carbon dioxide is CO2. And water is H2O. We'll put those into an unbalanced chemical equation. Now, there's no specific order when balancing an equation, but I notice that there are four H on the left and only two on the right. I will double the number of water. Now, I see that I have two O on the left and four O on the right. I will double the number of oxygen molecules. The equation is now balanced and we'll need to include states of matter. The problem text tells us most of the states of matter, but you will be expected to know the states of matter of common elements like oxygen.